I heard about this new thing, the vaccine concert ticket. Have you heard about it? Let's discuss. What's up guys, welcome back. My name is Shraz here on Thumbs Up Run where we talk about buying tickets, selling tickets to make sure that you have all the fun with your tickets. Today we're talking all about the introduction of the vaccine concert ticket. I wanna talk about how it all came to be, what led up to this, what is the actual ticket itself, and then finally, what does it all mean and is it really, you know, does it really make sense? So strap in, let's get started because it's gonna be a good one. All right, so first off, the current ticket landscape. You know, let's backtrack just a little bit. So first off, events, they are going on, as you are well aware, lots of baseball, basketball, hockey, all the big sports are taking place, but we haven't really been able to get, you know, full capacity venues yet. We're not able to get everybody into the stands, not everybody into the stadiums. So it is, you know, it's not quite the same experience, but we're working our way. We're working our way up there. What happens at these specific events? Well, one, like I said, you have limited capacity seating. That's number one. Can't get a full venue. So, you know, people are still, you know, spaced out. They're six, eight feet apart and there are different pods kind of pushed all over the place. If you want to learn more about pods, actually I actually have a video. You can go ahead and take a look up here. However, these seats though, they're just kind of all spaced across the entire venue, about 20 to 30% of capacity. And that's, uh, that's kind of how we're, we're keeping things safe. You know, everybody who goes in, depending on the state or venue, you might have to do a questionnaire or do a screening, something along those lines before you can actually get into that event. Last thing, most of these events as well require you to have a mask on you know again protecting yourself protecting others keeping all the people safe all good things recently however the Center for Disease Control out in the United States they've come out with new announcements new guidelines new measures surrounding the use of vaccines and being able to attend social gatherings and events so what did the CDC actually come out and say they basically came out and said the following if you have been fully vaccinated, meaning you have been vaccinated for at least two weeks since your final vaccine dose has been administered, then you are then able to go ahead and meet up with your friends and family and hang out and do all the social gatherings, indoors, outdoors, all the doors, any kind of door, you can do it anywhere. You can have people come and meet you and hang out with you and just chill with you. And you can do it all without worrying about that, that six feet of distance. And not only that, but you can also do it without a mask. All, all very interesting things. Hard to imagine, you know, just just a year, year and a half ago, maybe a bit longer. It's been since uh, you've 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 you know, you've given that that high five. Still not. Anyway, point being, guidelines came out. They said you can go ahead and start not worrying about social distancing if you've been fully vaccinated. All well and dandy, great, exciting news. And then what happens? Tickets. They 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 adjust instantly because the second that a venue decides that you know we can expand the amount of seats we're allowed to sell why wouldn't they and that is exactly what happened the mlb they just recently announced that they are going ahead with opening up fully vaccinated seating sections if you are fully vaccinated that does mean a two-week period between when you received your final vaccine shot and when the event takes place so if you got that shot done yesterday you can't get into the event tomorrow you still gotta wait that two-week buffer but what does it all mean? First off, in its most simplest form, no social distance requirements at all. You can go in, they're gonna sell the entire section, seats all beside each other, everyone's butt to butt, hand to hand, screaming, shouting, yelling, screaming into each other's faces, all that good stuff happening, all in a closed space, all together. I will admit that does sound a little bit scary, but if you've all been vaccinated, perhaps the risk is very, very minimal or very, very low. All good things. Number two, if you're going to the event and you're bringing someone who's under the age of 18 and they're not eligible for that vaccine, they too can get into the event. They too can get into the venue as long as they provide that negative PCR test or a negative COVID test, usually in that 24 to 72 hour window prior to the event taking place. Other thing to mention about these vaccine seats, masks are still required. When you think about it, it does make sense. You're going into a venue where yes, you will be sitting with people who are also vaccinated. However, there is an entire stadium still there with people who are not yet fully vaccinated. So they say, you know what, just because you get into the venue and we have non-social distance seating, we still require everybody to wear a mask because we wanna make sure we keep both yourself and those around you safe. So, sounds like a great idea, does it not? One might think so, but one might also not. We'll get there in a second. But first, there's a few more intricacies surrounding these types of tickets. First off, there are many venues, many teams, many locations where these types of tickets are non-transferable. So again, if you are fully vaccinated and all your attendees are fully vaccinated, all of you need to come to the event together, go into the event together, sit together, do everything together, 
because those tickets, they can't be moved between one person to another. They are tied to your account. So remember, if you're buying these tickets, many teams, they won't allow you to sell them or transfer them to anybody else. So if you are buying them to resell, double check because the Cubs, the Dodgers, many other teams, they are not allowing the resale or transfer of these MLB tickets. That's not to say all teams are the same though. Toronto Blue Jays, they are currently open for transfer. Other teams, same idea. However, double check, make sure that you can, you know, you're paying attention to what the transferability rules are because again, you don't want to be ending up in a situation where you have tickets, which you can't use anymore because you're sick, you're not feeling well, you don't want to go anymore, and then you can't sell. Because then, worst case scenario, you're out a bunch of money, you can't move the tickets, you're just just stuck, and then that kind of defeats the whole, you know, having fun aspect of the things. And then the last thing MLB is doing with these vaccinated seating sections, they're offering, you know, discounts and free tickets and free beer and free everything, all the free stuff. Basically, they're trying to, again, encourage people to start getting vaccinations done so that they can go ahead and, you know, hopefully open their venues to full, full capacity. That's what the goal is for everybody, get things back to normal, whatever that normal is. Uh, and to do that, they require, you know, a certain level of, of vaccinations, potentially to, to reach that goal. But then it begs the final question. Is this fair? Some people, they, they may choose not to get the vaccination done. And, and if that's what they choose to do, then, then so be it. However, if that is the case, we're now creating two types of tickets, two tiers, two brackets, two groups of seating that is available to certain types of people. The vaccinated seating locations, those are reserved only for people who have the vaccination done and can prove that before getting into the event itself. The non-vaccinated seating, on the other hand, it is open for everyone and still follows the same typical non-vaccinated, social distancing, mask wearing, all the other normal rules, all those rules still apply and those seats are still, you know, littered around the entire venue. So that in itself is not changing. The vaccinated seating, however, that requires proof of vaccination and they'll go ahead and check that prior to letting you into the venue. In the short term, it doesn't look like the vaccinated seating areas will be any different than, you know, the non-vaccinated seating areas in the sense that the quality of seating for the vaccinated seats versus the non-vaccinated seats, they do appear right now to be kind of littered around the entire venue. Everybody's kind of getting similar type options in terms of the vaccinated and non-vaccinated seats. So from that perspective, that's good. That's a good thing. You don't want to be creating a situation where you have certain types of seats reserved for certain types of individuals and basically eliminating a whole section of your fan base who cannot attend or access those seats just because they do or don't have a certain type of vaccination. That would be bad. That, and unfortunately, is where I think things may end up moving towards. As more and more people are getting vaccinated, teams, they may decide that, you know, we want to start reserving better sections, sections closer to the action, getting right next to where the players are, reserving those sections for the vaccinated individuals. Or, you know, those with better sight lines want to reserve them for the ones who have the vaccination as well. These are all things that teams could potentially do. However, it does not yet seem to be moving in that direction, though I do believe that is the direction they will want to head. They'll try to incentivize people, again, to get their vaccination done so that they can go ahead and open up more of their capacity. Teams are in the business of making money, and the best way to make money is by having more butts in seats. And the way to get more butts in seats is to have more people vaccinated and have those seating sections open for Fully to people who are meeting that vaccination requirement. Now the last thought that comes to mind and maybe something that you guys should uh, mention in the comments below is which sections or which types of sections do you think will be in more demand? Because when you create these vaccinated seating sections, you're basically saying these specific areas around the venue, these are reserved only for people who are fully vaccinated. However, you are still open to attend the event in any of the non-vaccinated seating sections and those again are all over the venue. Personally, I think the non-vaccinated seating sections, the social distance sections, I still think those would command a higher higher premium over the vaccinated sections. Just a supply issue because there's so many more tickets in the vaccinated sections. I just, I can't see those selling as quite as fast. But, you know, on the other hand, there could still be a lot of people who do want to go sit with their friends and family and all have a great time sitting next to each other there. So, hard to say. But I am curious to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comments down below which one you think would sell faster. That's all we got for today though. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely let me know by hitting the like button down below. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Great new content coming out every single week. And See you guys next time.